Welcome back to my channel guys, this is Daggett. Uh, today we're going to be doing some digital art actually. I'm doing this on my iPad Pro in Procreate. If you do not have an iPad or Procreate or any other digital drawing tablet, feel free to go grab a lead pencil or a mechanical pencil and your drawing supplies, your other drawing supplies, and let's get into drawing this one. So I'm going to be using a pencil to sketch to start with. You can use a HB pencil or I'm going to be using the nice sketcher from uh, the Battle Damage brush pack by Dave Tevenol. Check it out if you haven't already. It's a great brush pack. And to start this one out, we're going to start with our usual format and draw a circle. And this circle will give us the shape for our head. It's just a basic circle. From here, what we're going to do is draw a small oval at the front of the circle. And this will give us an area to start our mouth. This will be like the muzzle area. A couple of smaller ovals above that to give us the eyes. And we'll just draw in a quick center line as well so we can sort of base everything roughly off the center line. Now coming back from our eye, slightly on an angle and towards the back of the head here, we're gonna draw in a little triangle shape. That's gonna be an upside down triangle and this will give us a spot for our ear, the ear that's visible. And coming to the front of that oval, just drawing an upside down triangle to give us a spot for where our nose will be. You can start to shape out the cheeks a little bit as well. Just sort of following the rough shape of our oval and excluding the bottom sort of portion of that oval shape. And that'll give us our cheek areas. At this point, I'm just drawing in a little rectangle curved edge rectangle for the top teeth you can do the same just underneath it for the bottom teeth and an oval underneath that to give you the bottom jaw now coming back from there a curved line from the bottom jaw and join that into the ear by following the shape of the head and just underneath that we're going to do another big curved line from the ear to the jaw and we'll find a little bit of a center line on there and just create a little bit of a peak and this will be that sort of big fluffy neck area. To do our nose, we're going to do a line straight across the top. And then coming down from the middle of the nose, we'll come down, create a little nostril and join those lines up, connecting them to the top. And on the other side, we can bring a line up, do a little loop and join it up. And to finish the nose, just a couple of curved lines towards the center line. To do the top of the snout, we just do a bumpy line, I guess, like a little wavy line that comes from the forehead area and joins straight into the nose. It's as simple as that. To do our eyes, we're going to take those ovals and turn them into lemon shapes or almond shapes to give us the eyes. And on the inside, we're going to do a circle with another circle in the middle to give us our pupil. We're going to do that for both eyes. Now, above both of the eyes, we're going to draw in these curved shapes that are going to create an area to draw in like the eyebrow sort of areas. So just drawing in a curved shape like that. And then creating these little spikes or peaks, which just represent like the fur of the eyebrow there. And we want to do those above both of the eyes. And now I'm just going to come in and double line the underside of those eyes as well and that's both of them to draw in the shape for the mouth come down from the nose come out and create a loop and we're going to add to that loop above it and just create these overlapping curved lines that are wrinkles and folds in the muzzle area of the tiger here and same goes for the other side just joining back into the nose now I'm going to draw in three whiskers on each side. So just put a dot where you want your whiskers to be and draw these little peaks, really narrow peaks coming out from the face, or from the muzzle area on the face. And you can do these curved or you can keep them really straight. It's up to you. That's a bit of a style preference. It depends how you want them to look. And you can put as many or as few as you'd like. And after that, you can just put in these spots on the uh, muzzle as well that the tigers have. To draw our teeth in, we're gonna do a large sort of curved peak for the big tooth. Following on from this, we're gonna draw in these 
sort of little square shapes that just come directly across and flick up. We're going to do four of them and then another big curved tooth like that. And for the bottom teeth, we're going to do exactly the same thing. A big curved peak, which will give us our big tooth. And then coming in from behind that, we can come out straight across and flick down to give us our smaller teeth. And then another big curved peak. Now just drawing a curved line that follows the bottom side of the teeth to create our bottom lip. And to join that up, a wavy line that connects the uh, bottom jaw up to the muzzle area. Now next to draw the tongue, just behind the front teeth, we're going to just draw a nice big curve like this, like the tongue is folding backwards. And coming in from behind the bottom left uh, or bottom right tooth, we can come back following that line back as the tongue sort of folds up the sides like that. Following the center line where the tongue is, and then adding another line to indicate the other side of the tongue. You can also put in these two small lines at the back that curve to represent the other side of the mouth. Now to do our ear, we're going to draw in this little curved area in the middle of the ear. And we're going to come out, dip into that curve and then come back out. And then just add these little curved bumps to the bottom of that line. Coming back to the tip of the ear, we can draw a line back and create a folded ear sort of shape. Now on the inside of the ear, you want to draw a semicircle and then follow that along with the same little curved peaks we did on the eyebrows. It's a bit hard to explain what to do for the top of the head here. Essentially, we're going to come up, dip in a little bit towards the center line, come back out, dip again before coming back out to the eye. So I guess it's like there's two dips and three large sort of curved areas for the top of the head. Now we're going to draw in a little bit of details here. So drawing a curved line and then adding that same sort of fur texture that we did on the inside of the ear and the eyebrows to it. And you can make this super simple or a little bit more messy and uh, organic depending on how you want this to look. And you're actually going to do the same thing coming from the edge of the lip there down and around the bottom jaw just creating these fur textures little curved peaks that basically look like fur and you actually want to follow this pattern all the way up and around the bottom jaw pretty much joining back up into the ear area at the back there and the same thing's going to apply to the bottom sort of neck area of our tiger as well we're going to create these big curved peaks that are going to act as our fur and basically just look like messy, messy fur. Now drawing in the stripes is pretty simple, but everyone wants to do them in a different way. It's a style preference. I like to just follow off that center line and sort of create this V shape off the center line. And you can make these super smooth and curvy, or you can make them a little bit more rough edges, a little bit more jagged and tribally. It depends how you want them to look. So uh, you can sort of create these yourself, whatever patterns you'd like, and you can get creative with it and maybe even put images inside those patterns. Uh, just depends what you want to do. In terms of the ear as well, I like to just come off the top of the ear and curve down towards the front of the ear. And the patterning for the stripes on the face and around the cheek area is pretty much the same as the top of the head, just coming down sort of to a point and coming back up towards the top. So that's the sketch done for this one. Uh, we go to a new layer and I'm gonna be using monoline in calligraphy in black at its smallest setting. And this just gives you one solid consistent line with no variations. Now you guys already know how I outline stuff. So it's just gonna be the normal stuff. Although I'm not gonna be doing much boosting cause this is a traditional design. So once your line work is done, you can go ahead and untick the sketch and bam, there we go. There's our outline and I'm just going to duplicate that and use the layer beneath it for our shading. So working with inks as usual, you can just apply your black and blend out with a watercolor brush as always. But in this case, we're going to be using the ultra fine nozzle spray paint in procreate 
to give us that nice gradient and a little bit of a grainy look as well that gives us that hand painted look and to select what areas we're going to paint because of course we don't have the luxury of a fine tip uh, super fine tip brush we click on the select tool and automatic and this basically allows you to click on any area enclosed on the design it will turn blue to show you where you've selected so for now we're just going to select select the stripes I'm just getting a bit closer there select each part of the stripes and we can go ahead with our spray brush and basically paint in from the center of the stripes on the top of the head so solid black from the center blending out to a gray you can do them solid black if you'd like we'll do that from the top of the ears down and for the stripes on the face we're going to do from the bottom of the stripes up towards the top of the stripes blending from a black gently into a gray and a white so the next thing to do is shade the inside of the mouth so we can just select using the automatic select tool this area and the outside area of the mouth there and we can do a little bit of black fading into white from sort of the darkest areas on the inside of the mouth outwards and we'll just select the other layering parts of the tongue there as well so that will be here and here and we can shade those with a little bit of black as well again just coming from the inside of the mouth outwards and the last part will be the other half of the tongue there might reduce my brush size a little bit to get in there and just do a little bit of black blending outwards from here I just want to select the bottom lip area and we're going to do black from the top and just gently blending that down into a grey and black from the outside of the lip blending that inwards towards the center leaving a highlight at the front of the lip from here I'm going to select the white areas on the outside of the eyes just like that and we're going to do a little bit of black shading just coming in from the corner of the eyes inwards leaving a little bit of white around the actual um, iris area there and in this case I'm going to be doing the pupils just a solid black you can do them whatever color you'd like and add whatever fancy highlights you like to do the nose we're going to go to select and freehand instead of automatic and we're going to freehand trace the nose shape because it's not an enclosed shape it won't allow you to just select the nose so we'll do that freehanded and then solid black at the bottom and just a little bit of black blending up towards the top so normally doing this on paper, I'll do a little bit more sort of black shading depending on whether I want this to be a black and gray design. In this case, I'm gonna duplicate the uh, uh, our outline layer and we're gonna do color. So let's go into red and we'll still use our spray can ultra fine nozzle. And we're just gonna select the areas that we've already done in black. Uh, or we'll start off with the gums here actually. And we're just going to blend a little bit of red from the bottom and from the top, fading it to white just above where the teeth are to give us our gums. And then we can go ahead and select those areas on the tongue that we want to do in red. And just as you color over the top of your black, make sure you leave a little bit of a white border for a highlight. And you can sort of blend that red uh, gently into that white to give it that sort of painted watercolor look that we usually do. Now, what you want to do to see the shading underneath is click on the blending mode and change it to multiply. So now you can see the black shading that we've done on the layer beneath. We'll go ahead and select the other areas of the mouth that we want to uh, color in, taking our red and just coloring over those areas, making sure we leave that little stripe of white along the edge of each component of the tongue. Now what I'm going to do here is go ahead and select the entire sort of head portion, leaving out the neck area, the fur on the neck area, but just selecting the face and neck 
uh, sorry, face, cheek, and head section of this one. And we're going to do this part in an orange. So I'll just select a nice bright orange for our tiger face. Still using our ultra fine nozzle. And we'll just see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's a good color. So we're going to basically blend up towards the top and just leave a white sort of highlight across the top part of the head there. And bringing that color down onto the ear. Again, leaving a highlight streak at the top of the ear there. And there will be some parts we have to erase. I'll go over those shortly. Just bring that color down and across the cheek area, sort of blending it out to white where the fur sort of ends. Um, we won't actually have any on the on the uh, bottom jaw here. That'll be white, so I've made a mistake. We can just erase that. Just make sure if you're doing this on paper, you don't make the same mistake I did, because you can't really erase the uh, watercolor paints there. And then uh, the parts that we need to erase, we're actually going to use a sort of fine eraser for. So we'll go with the hard airbrush for our eraser. And you just want to erase anywhere that the orange shouldn't be. So the inside of the ear, there's a few small areas in the fur here that I don't really want orange. I'm just going to use the soft airbrush, I think, for those. The hard one might be a little bit too harsh. And then the cheek and whiskers also, or the muzzle and the whiskers. We'll need to get rid of any orange in those areas as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is grab our eyebrow areas and grab a blue color closer to white. So it's like a really light blue, bluish gray sort of color. And we're just going to blend out from the middle of the eyebrow shapes outwards. Leaving it white at the tips. And then on the neck, we can bring that sort of blue color down there. I'm going to have to redo those eyebrows in a sec. Here we can select the inside of the ear and add a little bit of our light blue to that as well. And for the bottom jaw of this one, we're going to switch over to the freehand tool again, because it's not an enclosed area and we'll work around the bottom area of the lip here and then just follow it around. It doesn't have to be exact, just to mask off that area so we can add a little bit of our blue shading to the bottom jaw. And I'll just quickly touch up those eyebrows as well, which I accidentally erased earlier. Adding a little bit of our blue shading and just fading out to white. From here, I wanna add a bit of shading to the muzzle area of the cat. So we're gonna to go to a darker, a little bit darker gray, make our brush a little bit smaller and we'll come in and, oh, it's still too big, a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's better. And we'll just do these streaks coming from the outside towards the nose, following the curvature of the muzzle area. And while we're here, we'll color in the whiskers yellow. So grab a nice deep yellow and small airbrush and just go over the whiskers as well making them a solid yellow you could do the whiskers whatever color you'd like if you want to you can do them black you could leave them white depends how you want it to look i like to do my whiskers in yellow for the inside of the ear use your freehand select tool to trace an area for the pink of the inside of the ear if you're doing this on paper you have the luxury of just grabbing a pink pencil or a pink marker and going straight into it but we will select an area, we'll choose a pink and go back to my ultra fine and just blend it out. For the nose, we have to do the same thing. Just freehand select it because there's no enclosed areas coming around and then using that same pink color and just blending it up, leaving a little bit of a highlight at the top. So bringing it up and I like to leave a fair bit of white. Using that same color, I think we're going to add a bit of a pink lip to the bottom of the eyes. So just selecting those areas and adding our pink in, leaving a little highlight towards the center of that. And the one on the right can be solid pink. 
to color in the iris we'll select them and i'll go to our color palette here and change the color so let's go to maybe a green greeny yellowy sort of color might make it a bit darker and just blending that out leaving our little white highlight and i might add a touch of yellow to that just to brighten it up and create a bit of a glowing effect around the actual pupil of the eye i think that looks pretty cool okay guys one last touch here and this will be a little bit of a sneaky tip is we're going to go ahead and select all of our stripes again just the parts that are not completely black grab a purplish sort of color you could play around with different tones maybe a blue or something like that and our airbrush and from the outer edges we're just going to color purple and any of the areas that were white will be purple and that'll blend really smoothly into our black and i think that looks really wicked but you could change the colors up a little bit or like i said just leave them how they were they look good like that too okay guys that's basically it how to draw a traditional style tiger head in procreate as a digital illustration if you like this video please give me a thumbs up leave a comments in the comment section down below letting me know what you'd like to see next time if you like this digital format or if you want me to make more of my sort of traditional hand painted videos head over to my facebook at daggett designs to see my online portfolio and any upcoming work that i have going on and uh, more than anything guys if you like the content that you're seeing please hit the subscribe button Make sure to turn on that notification bell so you see all of my new videos every time they come out. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.